Welcome to the special edition of 12 Days in March. In this two-part video, John Barber takes a categorical approach to the primary immunodeficiencies. This is a topic that I've procrastinated over the years, and I'm grateful that John presented it in a manner that even I can understand. I am interposed some brief commentary and summary slides for your review, emphasizing those features you need to be aware of for the USMLE Step 1 exam. Before launching, I have summarized the diseases covered in these two videos. The breakdown we'll use includes the lymphocyte and neutrophil predominant deficiencies. Interposed is an immunodeficiency resultant from a defect in the cytoskeleton, that being Wiscott Aldridge. To the extent that these disorders can be neatly categorized, our understanding will be greatly enhanced. As with other diseases covered on Step 1, these are chosen not because of their importance, rather they highlight and assess your understanding of our primary host defenses. So with that, let's go on ahead and launch this topic. Hi, my name is John Barber. This is going to be a two-part series on immune deficiencies. First, we're going to start with skid, Bruton's gamma, gamma globulinemia, and CVID. Second video will be on Wiscott Aldrich chronic granulomatous disease, Chediac Agashi, and leukocyte adhesion deficiency. I split them up this way because these are more problems with B and T cell production, while these are more problems with leukocyte function. So first, going through uh, basic B and T cell lineage, and we'll talk about how these uh, are these disorders affect this lineage, and then at the end we'll come back and talk about management. So first, uh, you start with your hematopoietic stem cell that produces your NK cells as well as pro T and B cells. Those mature to pre T and B cells. Your pre-T cell develops into your double positive T cell with C4 and CD8 expression, which then matures to either C4 or CD8 positive cells. Your pre-B cell uh, develops into an immature B cell. That then develops into your mature, naive B cell. Once you get uh, exposure to an antigen, that then induces class switching to your uh, B cell, which then expresses either Ig, A, IgE, or IgG, which then matures into your uh, plasma or memory B cell. So that's the normal process. So starting with so starting with skid. So severe combined immunodeficiency, as the name uh, implies, it's severe. So it's going to be something early on. And it's combined, causing both uh, lineages are affected uh, immunodeficiency. So skid blocks your hematopoietic stem cell uh, right out of the gates. So you get no T cell, no B cell, no NK cell production at all. Uh, presents very uh, young in life, uh, and because you have no T cells or any or B cells, you get uh, severe recurrent infections of all types: uh, bacterial, viral, fungal, protozoal. You have no circulating B cells. You have no uh, immunoglobulins in your circulation uh, because you don't have T cell maturation occurring in the thymus. You don't see a thymic shadow on an X-ray because you have no B cell maturation occurring. Uh, your germinal centers and your lymph nodes are small to non-existent. And uh, the ch children can present with failure to thrive, uh, chronic diarrhea, thrush, uh, and the infections. Uh, skids is caused by, most commonly, an IL-2 receptor uh, defect, which is X-linked recessive. It can also be caused by an adenosine deaminase deficiency, which is autosomal recessive, uh, but it's far less common. There are other causes as well, uh, but the... IL-2 receptor defect is most common. Here is a summary slide of the material John just presented. Not much to highlight here as patients with skid present with pretty classic symptoms on the boards. The standout issues that are right for testing include an awareness of the adenosine deaminase subtype. It gains attention as a target for specific gene replacement therapy. The other standout features that are highlighted include failure to thrive, largely related to chronic diarrhea. It should be easy to understand this concept as these patients are exposed to common enteropathogens but lack the ability to clear them. So it makes sense to consider these patients with chronic infectious diarrhea and resultant failure to thrive. Another key feature is the presence of fungal infections. These may take the form of severe mucocutaneous infections, but they are more likely to be presented with pulmonary fungal infections such as pneumocystis. The presence of fungus in the right clinical setting will help distinguish this disorder from other lymphocytic immunodeficiencies such as Bruton's agamma globulinemia. And the last point that John highlights nicely is the absence of the thymic shadow. And that makes perfect sense since this disorder is characterized by the absence of T lymphocytes. 
This slide gives a pictorial representation of the material covered. Note again, failure of the pre-T cell, the presence of fungal infections, and the image addressing the thymic shadow. Let's continue now with Bruton's A-gamma globulinemia. All right, second, Bruton's X-linked A-gamma globulinemia. Bruton's A-gamma globulinemia is caused by a deficiency in Bruton's tyrosine kinase, which inhibits maturation of pre-B cells to immature B cells. As a result, you have no mature B cells at all, you have no B cells in circulation, and you have no circulating immunoglobulins. Usually presents around six months of age, and the, the child will start getting uh, recurrent bacterial infections. You still have your T cell lineage, so you still have your CD8 cells to address viral infections and such, uh, but you have no B cell function at all. You have decreased immunoglobulins of all classes. Uh, it doesn't present for the first few months, however, because the, the mother's immuno IgG, because the mother's IgG is able to cross the placenta, the, the baby's um, immune system is sort of protected for that period of time. I view Bruton's as important for a couple of reasons. First, we see it as a disorder of B lymphocytes, B like in Bruton's, or X-linked as in boys. The bigger issue for me is that we can pull it out from the other disorders identified by eponyms. These confuse the hell out of me. But with Bruton's, we're lucky. A gamma globulinemia. There is no mistaking the defect in this disorder. No B cells to make globulins. The other important component of this disorder is the mutation associated with tyrosine kinase activity. They just can't get enough of tyrosine kinase. Although this disorder is described by mutation that interrupts signal transduction, this is the effect of tyrosine kinase in general. The tyrosine kinases are involved in downstream signaling. So we have a failure of signaling. What is the consequence? Well, the answer is straightforward and represents the hallmark pathogenic feature. Bruton's tyrosine kinase is necessary for B cell development or maturation. Thus, when mutated, we see maturation arrest and B cells that never develop into immunoglobulin secreting plasma cells. And therein lies the trouble, A gamma globulinemia. I love descriptive terms. So what would you expect to see without mature differentiated B cells? Correct underdeveloped germinal centers, no CD19 cell markers, and no humoral immunity. Perfect. The T cell line is intact, so what does that buy you? Correct, no fungal infections. So in this disorder, as you are prone to infections, how would you treat a patient with failure of humoral immunity? You did it again, IVIG. Not that the treatment is important, but it underscores the defect. As stated, once you pull Brutons from the morass, it becomes easier to visualize the other neutrophilic and cytoskeleton immunodeficiencies to be covered in part two of this series. And here is a visual representation of the discussion points for your records. The BTK protein is seen as part of the immunoglobulin signaling complex involved in B cell development and maturation. There is loss of downstream signaling. No germinal center with B cells and no CD19 cells. And here is a serum protein electrophoresis showing a polyclonal gammopathy on top for compare and contrast with the lower SPEP showing complete lack of a spike in the globulin region. Let's move on to common variable immunodeficiency and the conclusion of this presentation. The last one, CVID, combined variable immunodeficiency, is a problem with the final step of maturation of a B cell. So you have the class switching, but then it is not able to mature into a plasma or a memory B cell, and so you have reduced levels of circulating immunoglobulins of IgG, IgA, and IgE. You may have normal or even elevated levels of IgM. CVID uh, likely has a genetic component that's not well understood, uh, but it's often acquired in an individual's uh, 20s or 30s, uh, and it can result in an increased risk of autoimmune disorders, as well as lymphoma, as well as increased risks of infections. John's coverage of this topic is short and to the point, as this topic is not a big ticket item for the boards, although it is among the most common you will encounter in your clinical practice. In contrast to Bruton's, where the B cells don't develop or mature, in this family of disorders, the B cells don't differentiate, causing hypogamma globulinemia. I want to highlight the buzz phrase here variable. Variable phenotypic expression, variable genetic defects, representing a common pathway for many defects, and finally, given the variable expression of this disorder, it is a lousy target for USMLE board derivatives. Questions will be few and far between.
The standout feature I will emphasize is the age of diagnosis, 20 to 45. Virtually all the other primary immunodeficiencies are diagnosed within months of birth. This is the only disorder where the age will describe what the individual does not have. The other features to be familiar with are the diagnostic tests showing low levels of antibodies and consequently the treatment option being IVIG. Let's not harp on this disorder as we have lots of good immunodeficiencies coming up in the next presentation. John will finish the lymphocyte predominant immunodeficiencies with a quick review of treatment. So now let's talk about management. So for each of these, the immune systems are severely compromised, so you don't want to give any live vaccines to any of these patients. And you want, because you have decreased levels of circulating immunoglobulins, you want to uh, supplement their immune system with IVIG uh, every four weeks or so. For severe combined immunodeficiency, you also want to do a bone marrow transplant. You don't have to worry about a rejection because they have no circulating lymphocytes. That's it for these three. Pretty straightforward once you understand where in the lymphocyte lineage these three diseases are causing their problems. Thanks, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. And that concludes this discussion of the lymphocyte predominant immunodeficiencies. In this video, we reviewed the cellular defects and their infectious complications. Fairly straightforward without much memorization. Please join us in the next video presentation as we get into the more colorful disorders of phagocytic function. If you have any questions about any of the material, please contact me at 12 Days in March. Thank you.